This week on Alan's Antics. Nazi BMW threatens the British. Magda Goebbels would be proud. The German car company BMW has threatened its workforce in Britain that, quote, although leaving the EU was a matter for the British voter, actually leaving would affect the company's British work base. The email to staff added, tariff barriers would mean higher costs and higher prices, and we cannot assume that the UK would be granted free trade with Europe from outside the EU, end quote. This thinly veiled and disgraceful threat by BMW to its workers and to Britain if we voted to restore our democratic self-governance must surely lead to the cancellation by all patriots of any orders for BMW cars. For this and more stories, Head over to freenations.net and check out Rodney Atkinson's latest book, And Into the Fire, which is available on Amazon and you can buy it on iTunes too. That's And Into the Fire by Rodney Atkinson. Libertarian commentator Lauren Southern assaulted by anti-fascist protesters. Southern's insistence that there are only two genders annoyed the left-wing activists who accused her of being hateful and transphobic. The encounter concluded when a protester sneaked up behind Southern and shockingly poured a bottle of liquid, which Southern later said she believed was urine, over the libertarian commentator. In short, there are many reasons for the regressive left to hate Lauren Southern. The ugly, violent extent of that hatred has now revealed itself. The BBC is pulling out the comedy big guns on Brexit. Know thy enemy, a watchword for all. So with that in mind, I twiddle my knobs and listen to this the other day. Europe tearing itself apart over refugees arriving from the civil war we started in the first place by toppling Saddam and Gaddafi, while Britain stopped for four months to argue over whether or not to leave Europe anyway. But at least this referendum will put that question to rest once and for all. As one politician put it, it puts the uncertainty behind us. And that politician was Roy Jenkins in 1975. <laughs> because it won't put it to rest at all, any more than the Scottish referendum result put that question to rest. So, who are the two campaigns for and against Brexit? An alien word that's been forced on the English language more aggressively than any Brussels directive could ever do. But there are only two options for Brexit. Remain <laughs> and Brock off out. <laughs> For almost the next four months, we're a nation divided, though, on everything related to Europe. Both sides even dispute the correct words to the EU anthem, Beethoven's Ode to Joy. According to the outs, the Brussels-approved version is this. European superstate is secretly what we desire. We want to control your lives and all your money we require. Do We can judge you can leave if you want to be led by Boris and Farage. <laughs> Although many members of the British public tend to use this translation. European Union is something we don't care about. Probably it doesn't make much difference if we're in or out. Debt and crisis, Syria and ISIS, rise of China, worldwide slump. What's the point of budging if the world is run by Donald Trump? <laughs> So Punt and Dennis are writing lyrics to comedic effect to make sure the dumbed-down Liberals understand that they must not even bother going to vote at the June referendum, because it makes no difference to us whether we're in or out, does it? And those who are campaigning are all in confusion and are wasting their and everyone else's time and money even bothering with the EU. Clearly the word has come down from on high at the bead that everyone in every department must pull together to make sure that this country 
country remains under the grinding jackbooted foot of the EU dictators. And comedy is possibly one of the best ways of getting that message out there. EU and Turkey agree one-for-one -one refugee swap, but the final approval on a 3 billion euro deal will take longer. So, one in, one out. From Greece and Turkey, two completely different countries. I wonder how they're going to get that to work, practically, on the ground. Not on paper, not in the minds of politicians in their ivory towers, but actually on the shores and on the borders. MEPs want well-mannered chauffeurs to halt terrorist threat. EU officials want to spend £8 million on a team of 110 liveried chauffeurs after MEPs said they were afraid to travel alone with their ill-mannered Belgian drivers. Even if the service is approved, the Budget Committee and all MEPs must vote on the plans. Oh, those poor, poor people. Not being able to trust the locals and, oh, you know, they might get an Arab driver and, oh, my goodness me, and in this current climate and, oh, it's so difficult for them. I really do, do feel for the poor little things. It's such a hassle being driven by somebody who might not speak your language and, and might not know exactly where you want to go and might not wait like 15 minutes and... And, and then, and then, wouldn't it maybe better to drive yourself, you lazy? Well, that was just a little snapshot of the week on Alan's Antics on RadioFreeUK.org. To hear the full recordings and a whole lot more, go to RadioFreeUK.org. And there'll be more next week. Take care and have a safe one.